They come in different shapes and sizes, but 104 nuclear reactors around the United States are all rooted in the same basic science. They split unstable atoms of uranium to unleash massive amounts of energy, heating water, and turning turbines, enough to make about one-fifth of the country's electricity. But this fleet of reactors is aging, and even if their licenses are extended, they will start going dark by 2060. No new units have been authorized since 1979. That was the year that small amounts of radiation were released from Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, and authorities feared for days that a huge surge might escape from the plant. Protesters had already been organizing anti-nuke rallies to call attention to the risks of radiation. And though no one died at Three Mile Island, the close call was frightening to the public. Seven years later, 31 people died immediately after an explosion at Chernobyl, then in the Soviet Union. That disaster spread radiation over an area the size of Denmark and led to the resettlement of hundreds of thousands of people. Now, though, there is another peril to take into account. Climate change, caused in large part by burning fossil fuels like coal or gas. Fossil fuels produce nearly 70% of America's power. The nuclear energy industry argues that their kind of electricity has to be part of any solution to global warming because it delivers large amounts with very little carbon. Increasingly, others are beginning to agree. Many headlines and speeches have called this time the nuclear renaissance, with several Republicans in the Senate pushing a plan for 100 new nuclear reactors. Spurred by incentives launched under President Bush, the first applications in 25 years started arriving in 2007. Already utilities are seeking enough expansion to increase capacity. The last time that the NRC had an application in-house for a new reactor prior to 2007 was back in 1979. And that particular application was withdrawn uh, later on after the events of Three Mile Island. Given the increase in interest the, that the NRC knew was coming, we have expanded our workforce by about 600 people, uh, most of that here at headquarters. Yet the Renaissance is far from assured. Safety and waste issues remain, and the biggest obstacle of all is money. Decades have passed without accidents, and public fear about another Three Mile Island or Chernobyl has ebbed. What to do with radioactive waste from nuclear plants is another stumbling block. We have to constantly be vigilant, not only from existing reactors, from new reactors as well. The new reactor designs are not significantly different than the ones we have in operation today, and people need to understand that. The federal government assumed responsibility for finding a long-term repository. After decades of study, the choice, Yucca Mountain in Nevada, has been placed on hold by the Obama administration. The Department of Energy did submit an application for that site uh, in 2008. The staff has been reviewing it. Uh, there are questions going forward regarding the budget resources that will be available for the Department of Energy to continue to pursue, pursue that application. Uh, but at this point, from the NRC standpoint, we continue to look at Yucca Mountain. We'll determine whether or not that's acceptable. If it is, that would become the nation's repository. Most pressing of all is the question of who will pay to build all the new nuclear reactors being proposed. Nuclear power plants are relatively cheap to operate, but building a reactor can cost five to eight billion dollars. Utilities can't afford to pay for construction on their own, and huge cost overruns and delays in the past make private financing unlikely. What pronouncements by Wall Street nuclear power executives and the nuclear industry's lobbying arm all point to is the fact that nuclear power cannot get built without massive federal subsidies, price protections, as well as protections from risk and, uh, and operational uh, problems. So, so the reality is without all of this public support, nuclear power is not a viable option. The question is what is that public support going to cost the U.S. taxpayer? In 2005, Congress authorized loan guarantees of $18.5 billion. And in 2009, the Energy Department picked four finalists for the program. Already, though, the finalists are asking the department to put together as much as $40 billion in guarantees for their projects. Where's the loan guarantee commitment, both in bills we've already seen and in the upcoming bill, to 
show that the administration wants to see more than a handful of reactors built in order to increase that 20 percent electricity from nuclear? The loan guarantee, there are uh, discussions ongoing, uh, active discussions with five of the applicant, four of the applicants. We have $18.5 billion. We're, we're proceeding as fast as possible. Hopefully sometime this summer we can, we can make announcements. Uh, that $18.5 billion um, can cover three or four. And, it, uh, and no more. There are there are other applicants, and so so in order to proceed ahead with more, um, it, we would essentially need more money for for author, you know authorized and appropriate. And you'll be pursuing that in future years, future yes. bills, future op options. Yes, I think that makes sense. The industry would like to see the total go even higher to as much as $100 billion. And that number is getting serious consideration in Congress. But some say that nuclear power has had plenty of time to prove itself. And other forms of energy, like wind and solar, need more of a helping hand. While nuclear power cannot be taken off the table as a potential solution to climate change, at the present time, there are faster, safer, and cheaper ways of reducing greenhouse gas emissions than through new nuclear power plants. This includes energy efficiency and presently available renewable resources that are ready to be put on the ground today at a much lower cost, much more quickly, and with much less risk to the environment and from a cost standpoint.